What is up everybody and welcome to the driveway where this week our friends at Toyota have sent us over what I still feel is one of the most underrated luxury cars in today's market. However, for 2019, it's back and better than ever. This is the all new Toyota Avalon. So let's get to it. And as always, our walkthrough today starts with a talk about what's underneath. Now, the Avalon that we've had this week is not only the upper end limited trim, but as an added bonus, our tester is the hybrid variant. So fuel economy is definitely the name of the game here. And under the skin, it's pretty much like a lot of other hybrid models you'll find out there. We have a four cylinder gas engine paired with an electric motor. This vehicle is set up as a front wheel drive configuration. We have a CVT transmission in the middle to put the power down and and a sealed nickel metal hydride battery cell to complete the set. Now, as far as what's directly here under the hood, you're looking at Toyota's all new 2.5 liter dynamic force inline four cylinder engine with things such as their D4S direct and port fuel injection system, a variable valve timing with intelligence exhaust, and their dual variable valve timing with intelligence. Now, by itself, the engine makes 176 horsepower and 163 pound feet of torque. It's connected to a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor, producing a total system output of 215 total system horsepower. Now over a week of testing we've achieved an average of about 42.5 miles per gallon which is pretty much on par with what the EPA rates it. This limited hybrid trim comes in at 43 miles per gallon in the city and 43 miles per gallon on the highway running on regular unleaded fuel. Now, just like pretty much any and all other hybrid models on the market today, things like keyless access with push button start are standard features here on my Avalon Limited Hybrid. Now, as far as the key itself, I really do like it. It's a very elegantly styled key, uh, especially with the silver trim here on this particular fob. I love the Avalon name across the back with the blue highlighted uh, Toyota logo, just to let people know that you are driving the hybrid trim level of this beautiful luxury sedan. And you do have all of your other typical functions, lock, unlock, release the trunk and panic along with the releasable keyblade out of the bottom of the fob itself. But being the fact it's keyless, all you have to do again is just have the key anywhere in the vehicle, foot on the brake pedal, hit this blue power button on the dashboard and Now looking at this car from the outside, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that outside of the current crop of Lexus products, this is hands down the most luxurious and certainly the most beautiful looking vehicle that Toyota has ever created, especially here for their modern lineup. I mean, every crease, every curve, every angle, every piece of everything, even down to my tester's harbor gray metallic exterior, screams that the Avalon is now a serious competitor in the at least affordable side of modern day luxury cars. Now, again, as far as the design is concerned, it's absolutely beautiful, and it certainly has matured infinitely since the last generation went away just a year or so ago. Now, as far as my limited hybrid tester is concerned, we have full LED headlights here at the front with perhaps the widest light projection I've ever seen of any headlight outside of something European. Um, again, they're full LEDs, so you have LED high beams as well, along with automatic LED daytime running lights. And something rather interesting for this Avalon is something that Toyota calls their dynamic auxiliary LED turn signals. So something rather interesting here for this all new Avalon. You have this massive grill here in the front, which on my hybrid does include active grill shutters as well. You can see the sensors here as well for the front half of the active parking assist. And then of course you have things such as the blue highlighted Toyota logo that's reserved for all hybrid models in Toyota's line. And of course up here in the front you have sensors for things such as the pre-collision warning and also the dynamic radar cruise control. 
Now, of course, it's fair to say that the Avalon would not be considered a true luxury car without the quiet, comfortable ride you would expect from such a vehicle. Now, aiding in that comfortable ride, we do have a set of 18-inch super chrome finished alloy wheels. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call it chrome. It looks like more a very bright and polished silver paint job rather than an actual chrome of any kind. But nevertheless, I love the design of these wheels. These are wrapped in 235 45 series 18-inch hand-cooked tires. And let me just say, the ride is just as good as you think it would be. It's super smooth, super quiet, and also aiding in that ride, we have independent suspension all, all the way around, along with things such as four-wheel disc brakes with the usual regenerative braking system to go along with it. Now looking at it from a side profile, the all new Avalon definitely does seem like a much bigger vehicle. And again, the numbers on paper don't lie. At almost 196 inches from nose to tail, the all new Avalon is just a few inches short of being as long as a Lexus LX570, which is a sizable vehicle to compare this to. But when you look down the side, some of the features don't necessarily scream that this is the top tier hybrid trim level costing almost 45 grand. But you do have some of the typical features like body colored side view mirrors with a nice lashing of chrome and the appropriate LED turn signal here in the corner along with a standard blind spot monitoring system as, no as noted by the icons in each corner. But underneath you have the side view cameras which not only act as their own separate cornering cameras but these again also aid in that bird's eye 360 degree around view monitor that is an option here on my particular tester. Around the side windows you do have other lashings of dark of chrome and also gloss black and then also up top we have a standard power tilting and sliding sunroof which I'm actually happy to see a lot of vehicles with these panoramic sunroofs these days normally these uh, panoramic roofs are prone to breaking a lot more so it's nice to see that even on something as upscale as this Toyota just kept it simple and put just a standard sunroof in its place. Now, as we move towards the Avalon's back end, I will not only say that the rear end design is just as polarizing as it is up in the front, but it is also extremely unique in that aspect as well. We have full LED taillights back here, again, with the dynamic auxiliary turn signals. The with your standard LED turn si or uh, LED reversing lights underneath here as well. Of course, you have things such as your appropriate badging with the hybrid badge, pretty typical of Toyota there, as well as the blue hybrid badge up here on the trunk and the wonderful light bar that goes right here across the back. You do also have the standard backup camera, which again is the final part of that 360 degree bird's eye around view monitor. And you also have the rear sensors for the rear half of the active parking assist. Now, instead of putting things like fake exhaust tips down at the bottom, Toyota hasn't bothered with that. Instead, you just have a single exhaust outlet over here on the lower left. Now, if the exterior of this all-new Avalon doesn't give you a clue as to what's inside, then all of you are in for a treat when you open the door and examine this interior. Now, it's pretty obvious what jumps out at you the most about my tester's interior, and that is the color. This is known as Cognac, and it is one of three available interior colors that match with the Harbor Gray metallic exterior here on my tester. Now, starting off just with the seats, I am loving the perforations and the way these seats are all stitched together. I love this sort of cross hatch stitching that you get here on the inner bolsters with the two-tone gray and brown stitching and that then continues over here to the door panel. You'll notice the same diamond pattern stitching here on the middle of the door panel and you also get the beautiful stitched leather running here along your armrest. You also have things such as the genuine burl wood trim which goes not only across the tops of the doors but then continues across the top of the dash along with other little leather trimmed inserts such as the middle of the dash and also the outer portions of the steering wheel and center console. Now one final note before we sit down in this thing, I'm happy to report that not only does the driver get an eight-way power adjustable seat with four-way lumbar support, but that then continues over to the passenger side as well with the exact same adjustments. Not many competitors in this segment offer that level of power adjustments. Either that or they just offer too many. And as an additional bonus, both the front seats are not only heated but also ventilated. 
Now, sliding into the driver's seat of the Avalon, it feels like the boys and girls at Lexus had their hand in this car as well as the design team at Toyota. Now, you could definitely pick holes in some of the interior pieces, like, for example, this steering wheel design feels like it's been ripped directly out of the new RAV4, but apart from that, things like the shape of the dash all the way up to this beautiful floating center console, they all feel like they were designed for a much higher-end vehicle than this. But starting here directly in front of the driver, you do have the partially perforated and partial color matched three spoke multifunction steering wheel. I love the two tone design with the light gray and also this beautiful cognac color to match the rest of the interior. And of course, you do have all of your functions for different electronic creature comforts. Things like the dynamic radar cruise control, that function has been moved from the little stock that used to be down here in about the four o'clock position on the wheel. That's now its own separate aero pad over here on the right. Same with the distance function and also the button for the lane departure warning with active steering assist along with a couple of your hands-free radio controls that being the seek track button and the radio mode button which then continues over here to the lower left with the volume controls you also have things such as your hands-free bluetooth with voice recognition and a couple of buttons including a full-size aero pad for the seven inch thin film transistor display which is a standard feature on my hybrid avalon limited up there in the gauge cluster and we'll talk more about that here in just a moment but then if you move to the left of the column for a second First off, the column itself is power tilting and telescoping, so you have the little control over here on the left-hand side of the column. And then just to the left of that, you do have a couple of other features, a good few of which are standard equipment, things like the auto high beam assist and the heated steering wheel, the traction control, opening the trunk or the gas cap, and then you also have the button, which controls a couple of the aspects of the 360-degree bird's eye around view monitor, along with a forward-facing camera. Now, if I were to put the car in drive for just a second we do have the forward view camera so as you can see I turned it on there and now it's looking directly out the front of the car and you also have the 360 degree around view monitor that is a part of the advanced safety package in place here on my tester I believe it's an extra $1,150 or so now also included in that advanced safety package is the uh, I believe it's called the intelligent clearance sonar which basically at speeds under nine miles an hour that means that this car can actually detect and avoid low speed collisions. So that's another advanced technology feature that you can find here on the all new Avalon. Now looking over here in the center stack, the first thing that we get to is the nine inch touchscreen high definition display, which also includes Toyota's Entune 3.0 application suite with things such as navigation and also a 14 speaker JBL premium audio system with a 1200 watt amplifier on board, as well as clarify music clarification. Now we'll get to the audio system here in just a bit, but for things like the map graphics and stuff like that, it's pretty standard stuff and being the fact it's touchscreen. This isn't like a Lexus where you have to go down to a mouse pad in the center console. Everything is all touch sensitive. So it's pretty easy to understand. The graphics are, I guess, mundane at most. It feels a little bit dated as far as how the nav system is set up. But other than that, everything else in this system is pretty easy to understand. Things like setting your destination, your audio functions, such as Bluetooth media streaming. Uh, this is Apple CarPlay compatible, but I'm not sure if it's Android auto compatible just yet. I know for certain Apple does have their hand in the uh, telematic system in here. You do have the application suite, which you do have to have a uh, subscription for. But other than that, everything else in here is exactly what you would expect from a lot of Toyota's other products. Now, about that audio system, I will say that with the right song playing, this sound system sounds so good, you would expect it to be a 20-speaker stereo system rather than just 14. So let's take a listen and see just how good JBL did with the Avalon sound system. Now, once you get through playing around with all the functions within the nine inch touchscreen display, you get down here to what I feel is a little bit of a complaint of mine. That is how the button arrangement is set up here for the dual zone automated climate control system. I mean, some of the buttons are pretty obvious. You do have your heated and ventilated seats for both your front occupants, your temperature buttons on the outside. But then down here, as James May would say, you need fingers like cocktail sticks to operate a lot of the buttons. They're so thin and sometimes you just don't have a clue 
what is where. But once you get used to it, you have things such as the automatic function over here on the left, the ability to turn off the system, your front and rear defrost with your heated exterior mirrors, your fan speed right here in the middle, your climate zones on this little button here, sort of mid-center, along with things such as air conditioning recycling, air conditioning introduction, as well as the sync function, which automatically synchronizes both temperature controls. So you can either control both of them by themselves, or you can control each one individually. Now, as you move down to the center stack, at first it feels like there's not really much going on here except for things like the shifter and the small button array back here just to the left of the cup holders. But the first thing you need to know is there's actually something hidden underneath this little center stack. You push on this ribbed portion here, push it back, and you reveal my tester's Qi wireless charging pad. Now, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that for you guys. My phone is extremely old and broken at the same time. Now, I talked about this interior being in ensconced in a sea of leather and it continues on here into the center console. You have the beautiful plush leather surround for the cup holders as well as here in this center armrest. I'm loving how soft it feels and again it feels like something out of a much higher end vehicle than this $45,000 hybrid premium sedan. Now as far as the controls here including the shifter which is also wrapped in leather with a nice bit of aluminum, the shifter itself feels very very nice and again this controls the electronic C CVT or continuously variable automatic transmission with the sequential shift mode which has six simulated gears over here to the left hand side of the drive selected portion of the shifter. Now as far as the shift mechanism itself I actually like the way it goes into gear. I like the fact it's not gated in about 18 different directions it's just you pull it straight back and it goes through all the gears accordingly. Now the manual shift mode you push forward to go up a gear and pull back to go down a gear but unfortunately with CVT there is a little bit of that rubber bandy kind of performance. Now, don't get me wrong, even with a CVT, this Avalon Hybrid can get up and go pretty darn well, but the manual mode really doesn't feel like you're shifting gears. It really doesn't have a, a change in the engine note or anything like that when you're driving along. You have a backup camera with the cross-hatched guidance lines as well, and it has three different settings. You can either have it as a split screen here with a wide-angle camera and the bird's eye 360 degree around view monitor. You can either have that or the wide angle lens where it actually brings in a couple extra little inches or so of camera angle or you could just have it as the standard camera as you see it here. You also do have the automatic door locks as you just heard so when you put it in park the vehicle unlocks put it in any other gear you can see that the doors automatically lock. Now, once you get below the shifter though, this is what I'm actually surprised to see. There's not that many buttons here to do a whole lot of things. You have obvious ones like your electronic parking brake, which is standard. And when you put the vehicle in park, that automatically engages. So if you put it in drive, it automatically unlocks. So it's kind of a neat little thing that the electronic parking brake isn't one of those ones that you have to manually release yourself. Now, speaking of brakes, we do also have the auto brake hold as well. So you pull up to a complete stop with that engaged. You can actually take your foot off the brake pedal and the auto brake hold will hold the car in place until you put your foot on the accelerator. But then continuing on, we have a four mode drive mode select in here. You have your typical ones such as eco mode, normal, and even a sport mode, which does kind of heighten the car up a little bit. But this being an, a, a, a hybrid vehicle, we do also have the EV mode as well. Now, unfortunately, the EV mode is a bit sporadic. It depends on how well the battery system is charged, but I've been able to cruise around on this thing, hence the reason we've gotten over 42 miles per gallon combined over our entire week of testing thanks to the EV mode and this car's superior hybrid powertrain. Now moving on to the center console just briefly again it is padded in a beautiful leather as you would find here in the center console as well and it contains two additional USB ports here in the middle. You can see each one is a 2.1 amp charger along with another USB outlet so three total along with an auxiliary jack for people who still like to use methods as such. Now before we move on to the rest of the vehicle, there are a couple of other little party tricks located up here in the ceiling. For starters, you do have the almost frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, the controls for which are right here, as well as a three person home link garage door system. But up here in this little control panel, you do have a couple of little niceties, including LED map lights, the controls for the power tilting and sliding sunroof, they're all automatic one touch. But then you also have something called mood lighting. Now that's not a system that takes place 
always under the floor, but instead the majority of the lighting we've found is here in the cup holder. So you turn that on and it emits this beautiful kind of icy blue light color that illuminates things like your drinks here in the center cup holders. But as far as the sunroof itself, it's not panoramic or anything like that, like I said, but it is still a very, very smooth operating sunroof nonetheless. Now, as you would expect from a luxury vehicle of this size, rear seat legroom and space and also creature comforts is definitely not an issue here with the all new Avalon. For starters, as you can see space wise, I'm six foot one, I'm sitting directly behind myself and I have plentiful amounts of space between my knees and the back of the seat. You won't find any plastics on the back of the seats here, just again, a continuation of that beautiful soft leather upholstery. You do have two leather bound mat pockets back here, as well as things such as a JB speaker hidden here in the door so again you get just as good a sound quality here in the back as you do in the front and you also have a couple of other little creature comforts including dual USB ports here at the back thus making five USB ports total here in the all-new Avalon along with heated rear seats as well now one benefit of this hybrid model is the fact that it still comes with 60 40 split fold rear seats if this were a normal hybrid model with a big battery pack in the back you would simply have a little pass-through that would would normally be located here in the center console but instead in this case like I said we do have full 60 40 split fold rear seats the access for which is located in the trunk now one of the unfortunate drawbacks of a lot of hybrid vehicles these days has always been the placement of their batteries and in turn that usually means a decreasing cargo volume however for the all-new Avalon that is simply not a problem so we'll open the trunk here and first off it flows upwards so beautifully you would almost think it's power assisted but as you can see there are no buttons for such a function or any kind of power assisted system but looking inside the first thing that's the most important is you notice there's no huge hump there hidden behind the seats that that's something that a lot of hybrid vehicles of this size, even to this day, will still have in some cases. But because there's no annoying hump and because you have a completely flat floor, you're looking at 16.1 cubic feet of total total cargo room and that is still pretty impressive for a hybrid vehicle of this size. Now the only drawback I can see about this rear cargo area is the placement of the trunk hinges. Unfortunately there's no enclosure that they fold into. They are still very much exposed so if you have a large piece of cargo like this package I have here unfortunately you do run the risk of crushing it if you have it set kind of over in these corners but now, being that this is a big premium luxury sedan, of course, safety and safety technology are also very hefty talking points. Now, just in the interior, we have a total of 10 airbags here. You have the driver and passenger front impact. You have side curtain and side impact airbags, as well as an inflating driver's knee airbag, just to name a few. But also, as I mentioned before, the Avalon, like a lot of other Toyota models for 2018 and 19, includes the standard Toyota safety sense system, along with the advanced safety package which we talked about earlier and some of those features but not all of them at least with the safety sense system you do have things such as the dynamic radar cruise control with distance sensor the lane departure warning with active steering assist you also have blind spot monitoring that is an additional feature outside of the TSSP system um, but you also do have things such as the pre-collision warning with pedestrian detection you also have rear cross traffic alert and rear cross traffic braking as well the rear cross traffic alert comes with the blind spot spot monitoring but the rear cross traffic braking comes with that advanced safety package but in all the Avalon is an absolutely beautiful car and if you really want to make a statement but you don't want to pay a hefty price tag like the European competitors then the Avalon is definitely a vehicle to fit that bill and on that note everybody our time here with the all-new 2019 Toyota Avalon Hybrid Limited has now unfortunately drawn to a close I do hope everybody's enjoyed this review as much as I've had fun making it for y'all now if you guys like what you see please do hit that thumbs up button and also be sure to subscribe for many more videos like this and more to come in the future but in the end a huge thanks goes out to the folks at Toyota for lending us this absolutely gorgeous 2019 Avalon for us to have for an entire week but in the end guys I hope you enjoyed the review and I'll see y'all next time take care everybody and stay safe